Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is uh, the Board of Library Trustees meeting of November 18th, 2020. Uh, welcome everyone out there and um, we'll begin with a roll call. I'm Michael Gray, I'm the chair. Uh, and I'll call out the other people. Um, uh, Layla Johnston's the library director, are you here? Yep, she's here. Uh, uh, David Boucher's our, our vice president, our vice uh, chair. Yep, here. Yep, he's here. Um, all right, um, Melanie Mannheim is filling in as secretary for Kendra, who's a baby, she's here. Uh, Cindy McNaught's not here, and uh, our new trustee, Christina Cooper, you here? I am here. Excellent. So we have four trustees and the library director here tonight. Uh, we have quite a bit of stuff to go over. So uh, without further ado, let us uh, begin. Uh, I just want to make one personal comment. I want to thank Melanie Mannheim for her um, diligence in putting together uh, things to help Christina get uh, started. Uh, all the things that she's done are just amazing. Uh, you're such a kind person, Melanie. And uh, I also want to say that uh, she also has been doing a lot on uh, putting things together for us to update our policies, the old policies that haven't been updated for like seven, seven years or, or less. Um, so we're going to update those uh, more on that later. But Melanie's put a lot of work into writing letters and, and giving us lots of information. So she deserves uh, lots of kudos and a big gray star. That's because my name's Gray. All right. <laughs> so uh, it's okay. Uh, our first uh, order of business tonight is um, public comments. Do we have any guests yet? Yes, you do, uh, Michael. You have one call in listener. So okay. uh, if that person wishes to speak, I would ask if they would uh, raise their hand if, if they can. If they're on, if they're on the phone, I'm not sure how they do that. So. Uh, but I, I'm going to, I guess it's your call, Mr. Chairman, but I would invite this person in and uh, see if they would wish to speak. Okay. It's yeah, not on I a computer, it's on a phone connection, so. Right. Well, uh, you have my uh, approval to do that. We like to hear from the public. So, okay. So if he uh, or she logs in later or connects. No, so I'm sorry. So the caller is here. Uh, the caller has to press star six on a phone to uh, unmute. I don't, I don't have the ability okay. to, oh, there Hello. you go. Oh, hi. So who are we speaking uh, with? My name is um, Eric Bascom. I'm from 315 Pinehurst Drive in East Palm Meadow. Okay, great. How can we, uh, Am I able to like use the uh, one minute for, can I use my one minute for the visitor comment? You can have, well, whatever it takes to <clears throat> get your point across. Okay. Okay. Um, I would like to um, see if the library might be able to offer um, residents as well as the public um, timed appointments uh, to be able to utilize the library as far um, as far as other communities, Long Meadow, Aglon, West Springfield, and Wilbraham. They're doing this for the winter as well as the fall now because it's getting colder. Um, you set up a 15 minute or a 30 minute appointment where they let maybe 10 or 15 people in at once using the social distancing protocols wearing face masks, coverings, as well as they sit up like you have in CVS and Wal Walgreens, you have those lines on the floor where you can space people out five to six feet apart. And then for a checkout, you would have, um, you can utilize your self kiosk already that's already set up at the library for people to check out books on their own without needing to man it. 
Um, and you could still offer curbside if, if it's difficult for people to come inside. Um, right now we're in a yellow area for COVID-19 in the town of East Long Meadow. And I'm just a little concerned about Mary McNally, that your town manager. You know, I spoke with your manager at the library, uh, assistant supervisor. Um, she said that it's up to the town manager to make a decision about why you're not reopening. Um, because the governor gave you approval. Um, I understand you're at the Rotary and you've been making decisions based on the schools because the schools are based on remote status. You are a town library and not affiliated with the school, but you may get some assistance from them. But I know for sure, I spoke with Don Anderson and several officials. Um, the last thing I was going to say was the Karamande and Tiger Press with Eric Wester and um, and um, Congressman Neal, they're offering assistance for PPE if your library needs assistance from the public um, to open for COVID. Um, I just wanted to get um, reiterate that I am uh, 41 years old, I'm young, and I'm um, kind of exhausted from going to different other libraries like Guam Meadow and Ag Guam to check out materials without being able to come to my own town library without having to do the curbside. I much rather would walk in, browse the the new art of new uh, books and uh, whatever books we have, and be able to check out material within a reasonable um, appointment. You know, I think there should be two options of giving people uh, a, a better option than just curbside. I think it's rather difficult. Again, uh, thank you so much. Well, thank you for uh, for calling this to uh, our attention. Thank you for. Um, uh, I, I read your letter. Um, yep. And and uh, so so I could I I could choose just to say thank you. We have your letter. We'll think of, you know we'll take it under advisement. But I want to just give sure. you a few things. Um, uh, there there are differences in the towns. Uh, there are differences in the staff. Um, you know there's there's more to it than you included in your letter. Uh, the key thing here for you to know is, first of all, our, uh, our library director is very thorough. She's fully aware and in, in, uh, in communication with the, the, the head people at Storrs Library and other uh, nearby libraries. She knows about this. Um, the decision to, to phase in um, this uh, uh, appointment uh, procedure is something that uh, we're aware of. Uh, it is definitely, you know, an option. However, the decision to open the library in, in any way other than it is right now is with the town manager uh, in conjunction with Amy Petrosky at the, uh, uh, the health department and the emergency uh, management team. So, so it's, it's, it's not up to the, the trustees or the library director to make that decision. We are aware of it. And the last thing uh, that I'd like to just let you know is that, that the COVID, um, pan, well, the, the pandemic is, is escalating. Uh, it has different rates in different towns. That's something we have to take a look at. And we're also expecting um, a fall surge with the flu season coming. We're not sure what to expect. So in order to keep uh, the town safe, in order to keep the kids from having a place to possibly catch it, doing you know reports after school, and in order to keep the library staff safe, uh, so far uh, we haven't opened the library for appointments or, or other things. I also know, thanks to your letter, so I wanna thank you, because I've learned a lot from uh, researching this so I could talk to you tonight. Um, uh, our library director does have her own plan for reopening the library. So we're on top of it. And, uh, you know, if you need certain books, uh, you could still, if, if you know what they are, uh, call in and we can get them to you on the sidewalk. Uh, and there are ways of scanning, you know, popular books and things on the website. So um, that's kind of what I want to say to you. And I just, again, want to thank you for, your uh, letter and uh, you know because we want people to be happy and we want to open the library more than you do believe it or not yeah but right now thank we you people... go ahead 
thank you. I just want to say thank you for your time. Um, I have another meeting I have to go to tonight, and I appreciate okay. it. Great. Well, thank you thank for you. calling Bye -bye. in. You bet. Bye bye. Well, I hope that went well. Uh, so for all of you that are out there listening, um, you heard what I said. Uh, we want to open the library as soon as it's safe, but until it is, we want to keep you and our library staff safe. So, uh, okay, so are there any other public comments that I don't know about? Do we have anybody else online or anything? No, there is no one else attending. Okay, great. So we'll move on to our next point. Uh, our next point is the approval of the minutes uh, of our last meeting. Do, do any of the, uh, does the library director or any of the trustees have any comments about the minutes? No. No. Okay. So it sounds like we don't have any comments. I don't either. So they're good. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of October 21st, 2020? Come on. I'd like to move to approve the minutes there of our October 20th, uh, 2020 meeting. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second it. This is David. Right. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, okay. So our next uh, thing is the uh, director's report, which is uh, Layla's. Uh, she's on now. Layla, Thanks. tell us about it. And, and really quick, just to... Um, reiterate what Michael said about uh, ways that we can get new books into the hands of, of our patrons. Um, on the library's website, if you go to the home page and you scroll down to the bottom, there is a scrolling ticker called Wowbrary, and it is updated weekly, and it shows all of the new books or DVDs or other library materials we may have received. And there's also a way that you can sign up for that by email newsletter to be sent to you once a week so that you can still see all the brand new items that we're getting in. You can place holds and borrow those so you can browse virtually. And we also have, thanks to the hard work of the staff and their creativity, our sidewalk stroll. So anybody who is interested can come to the building. We have um, books and DVDs and large print and playaways and all of our other good items on display through the windows and you can call the library we'll get those items for you right away get those checked out to you and you can take them home instantly so i just want to um reiterate thank you michael for bringing that up that we do have many ways that we're still trying to ensure that people can get their hands on those new materials and now i'll talk about my report okay uh building maintenance the library building lost power on monday november 2 due to a mechanical failure National Grid has since replaced a faulty connection and the problem has been resolved. Public services. The fall virtual reading challenge was a great success. The library enrolled 187 registered readers and we report nearly 100,000 hours read, 96,989. Congratulations to all participants and to library staff for a successful program for all ages. We will once again sponsor our annual giving tree with all donations benefiting children from birth to age 18. Donations will be distributed to gift recipients by New Beginnings, a shelter in Holyoke for families in transition. And we uh, received an updated request um, last week for gifts for 125 children. So the need this year is, is greater than ever, uh, ranging in ages from birth to age 18. Can you tell people, are they supposed to bring things or money for this? Uh, I'll, we have instructions on the website and we have instructions online, but generally um, if people want to donate gift cards, we do, we do uh, accept those, um, but I'll, I'll describe the procedure for you now. Uh, our patrons greatly look forward to donating every year to help families in need uh, during the holiday season. So the procedure for donations this year looks a little bit different, but it is as follows. A request for donations will be sent out via the library's email newsletters on November 20th. Recipients will receive a registration form that includes donor recipient information categorized by gender and age. The form will take the place of the gift tags that were picked up by patrons in previous years. 
So for example, you can sign up to sponsor a 13 year old boy, just as an example, and you will receive, um, you know, has he requested games or toys or you'll receive a little bit of information that the shelter has provided to us. Um, gifts can be dropped off at the library from December 1st through December 13th. And there will be a clearly labeled box designated giving tree at our curbside pickup area. Staff will empty the box throughout the day. And we in fact, um, will start taking donations at any time. So if anybody wanted to contact us and let us know that they'll be dropping something off at the curbside pickup area, we'll make sure that we come out and retrieve that item. Um, there will be a clearly labeled box designated giving tree at the curbside pickup area and staff will empty the box throughout the day. A staff member from New Beginnings will pick up gifts the week of December 14th. And so currently New Beginnings is requesting assistance for 54 families. Like I said, it is 125 children this year. Uh, we will also be accepting donations of toiletries such as soap, shampoo, lotion, toothpaste, and toothbrushes. So anyone who would like more information about the Giving Tree, uh, please call the library's children's department at 413-525-5400 extension 1506. We look forward to helping our families in need. Virtual children's programs that are coming up. On Thursday, November 19th at 6.30 p.m., the Children's Department, that's tomorrow, will host a virtual program on speech and play with Samantha Bernier. Uh, this program will cover supporting the parents' understanding of their child's communication skill level and how to support the next stage of their development. You can register for this program on the library website. On Monday, November 30th at 6 p.m., the library will offer a Zoom program for parents and caregivers on the topic of helping children cope with anxiety. How to help kids with anxiety will be presented by Madison Bold. This training will include defining and discussing anxiety, worry, and stress in children. Recommendations will also be offered on various parenting techniques, resources, tips, and skills to help navigate parenting a child with anxiety. You can also register for this program online. We have a virtual adult program coming up on Tuesday, December 1st at 6.30. New York Times bestselling author Michael Tugius, I hope I'm saying that correctly, will present a narrated slide presentation based on his book, Quabbin, A History and Explorer's Guide. The program features the demise of the lost towns flooded to create the Quabbin Reservoir, the construction of the massive reservoir, and how the Quabbin works today. In addition, Mr. Tugius will make the, take the audience on a natural history tour of the Quabbin and surrounding area with suggestions for day trips. Please register for this virtual program by visiting the library's website. A Zoom link will be emailed to all participants the day of the program. To help Massachusetts residents having difficulty with internet access, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners is gathering more detailed information about public library Wi-Fi offerings. The MBLC will create a map of locations throughout Massachusetts that provide free public access to the internet and are accessible from the outdoor seating area, parking lot, or road. East Long Meadow Public Library is included in the statewide map. And so that's just another tip for anyone who um, may need Wi-Fi connection during this time. Uh, our Wi-Fi has been boosted so that it extends fairly far into the parking lot uh, on both sides of the building. Thank you. Okay. Is it 24-7? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, may I have a motion to accept the director's report of uh, 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 um, well, today, November 18th. I move that we accept the director's report for today's meeting, November 18th, 2020. Thank you very much, Christina. Do I hear a second? I can second that, Michael. All right, Melanie, thank you very much. All right. So our next uh, area is uh, the committee reports. So we do have something pending that Melanie is going to speak about. I have, uh, so since our last trustee meeting, I did hear from town 
and the library trustee bylaws are considered an inter internal document of the uh, library trustees and not included in the town general bylaws, so we are a go. Uh, so since they've been formally approved and voted on by our group, the library trustees, it is definite go. Uh, so two points I'd like to make in this. I will email uh, Layla the uh, bylaw document and we can add that um, as we discuss to the library website. And then the second point I'd like to make is, uh, as you know, the examples are uh, a vital part in developing a policy or a document. So I'd like to send our trustee bylaws to the MBLC for them to use on their website for other libraries to use uh, as a resource and a, a good example to follow. So um, that's all I have for right now. So it's a, it's a good document and it's a, it's a go. That's terrific. Thank you for all your very hard work on that. Um, and, uh, you know, one good thing about sharing our document with others is that they might find something in some way of something we didn't think about or some way to improve what we've done and can make it even better. So, uh, again, I think that's a great thing. And maybe we can share some of our other um, policies with, with the world. Uh, down the road. All right. Thank you, Melanie. The next is old business. And this is basically the gift policy. Um, uh, the, the issue that we uh, discussed at the last meeting was the idea of uh, uh, doing something about the wall. Um, yeah. Anybody have anything to say? Uh, yeah, I think uh, this is David. Yeah, I think we should do something. Uh, I, I like uh, I liked uh, Diane's uh, kind of suggestion that she had. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do something list? like the, the list. Yeah. Or okay, so David's referring to a list uh, that uh, we asked Diane Tiago because I, I actually think not only has she been with a, a friend, a patron or whatever uh, of the library for many years, but she also um, uh, is, is the, uh, the, the chairperson at the, um, of the Friends of the Library. Um, what, Di what Diane talked about, uh, and I think I'm not sure if she participated. I think Cindy did when the library, I think she did too. Um, no. uh, they, they did have a list. There's things like uh, steward $100 to $499 as a gift, advocate $500 and up. And that goes up to a million dollars with different names, member, supporter, sponsor, benefactor, patron, founder, and pace setter. Um, the thing is, um, we don't, you know, my, I think this is great. I mean, I like this idea a lot, but um, I'm, I need to find out maybe Layla. Knows, do we know how much money every, so that we know where to put them? Do you know? So um, I have a question. Did the board want to form a committee? um because that's yes yes i'm getting to that <laughs> okay um so okay. this was part of the reason michael to to speak to your question this was part of the reason that um the board decided to look at the policy because uh there were differing amounts over the years um so the committee can can you know make that a new a fresh recommendation right um, my question just was as we incorporate the old uh, donors into the new wall, do we know where to put them? Uh, do we know how much they donated? Is it recorded somewhere? Yeah. Okay, good. So um, I, uh, I was thinking about uh, having a committee and uh, I thought that um, Cindy being someone who, she's not here tonight, but 
being someone who was there at the original uh, session, and then uh, when we put the wall up, um, and maybe um, Christina, who has more library experience than most of us, um, maybe they could sort of be the uh, on that committee. If if I don't know, Christina, are you up for? putting together a proposal for a really nice uh, giving wall? Sure, that sounds great. Uh, and I lean towards more minimalist, which may be good that, uh, you know, to, to keep it simple, but, right. uh, you know, to acknowledge our good. donors as well as possible. Right, so so and now, David, you spoke up. Um, are yeah. you okay with having them run this? Sure, yes, I am, yeah. Okay, and we're, we can all contribute if we have ideas. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, as, as I thought about it and looked at things, uh, I just, my only real thing is that you have to design the, the wall so that um, somehow there's room for expansion. In other words, um, there may be some categories if we decide, like you said, Christina, minimalist, instead of having like 10 categories, maybe there's only five or three or something right. but we, we we don't want a wall with a whole bunch of blank space on it but on, you know for future people like having bricks out front that don't have anybody's name on them um but on the other right. hand uh we have to allow for expansion so somehow if you know there was a way to put extra planks in there later if they all fill up or something just try to think about that a little bit that's my only thought uh, did Melanie or did Christina or did you, David, do you have any uh, any thoughts you want to put out there kind of right now? Uh, no, not really, not right now. But I, I do like the idea of having something. But like I like Christina said, I think a mental, uh, um, not something, you know, something very not simple, but something that works, like you were saying to Michael, that uh, they can add on to and, you know, uh would be good uh okay so um so i'll i'll call cindy yeah uh you know tomorrow or the next you know I'm, whatever when i can get a hold of her and ask her if she and christina would be the uh uh the giving wall commit committee and um and that's great so i think that we're in good hands there and we'll just see what kind of progress uh, they can make. There's no deadline on this. The friends wanted to make a few plaques for people who gave money recently um, and for some reason wanted our uh, approval. But uh, I mean, I, if they want to get something up there, they should put something up there that's appropriate now. But I think that uh, we can do better. So that's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. So that's the... Um, that's the old business. Now, as far as new business, uh, Melanie uh, uh, looked up all our policies and the years they were last approved. And the three that uh, are at the top of the list for being looked at or modernized, if, if necessary, are the cell phone policy, the safe child policy, and the reciprocal borrowing policy. Um, all right, so uh, I talked to Melanie earlier, and um, if, if I may just assign these to people, um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, what we kind of want to do. Um, Melanie has provided me with a list of libraries that she uh, knows have cell phone policies, which is great, and that list can be sent to everybody who's working on this. Um, and uh, the, if you go to the, these different libraries and you find just three of them that you like that might have something that you might want to incorporate into ours, um, if you could send uh, the links, at least the links, if not the policies, to all of us, um, we can then, you know, all sort of look at everything. And then if we have any comments, get back to the three people that are um, gonna sort of be the point person on these different policies. Um, I, I, I think that'll work out great. Uh, our goal will be to uh, 
uh, have everybody in the next, I know Thanksgiving's in the middle of this, but, but let's try to look at everything. And, and if you have some comments about it, at least have, you know, some comment on in each of the three. So, it, you know, we kind of know you, you read them. Um, we, I'd like, I mean, I'd like to assign the cell phone policy to Melanie because she's all ready to do it pretty much. She knows right where to go. Uh, the safe child policy, I'd like Christina to work on. I was going to volunteer um, for that. <laughs> okay, thank you. And David, could you do reciprocal borrowing policy? Yes. Okay. And by the way, um, if as you look into these things, feel free to contact um, uh, Layla um and see if she has anything that you know in the last few years has been like something new based on technology or even something that you might want to consider due to the pandemic um and also uh um layla you might want to check with uh your staff in a meeting like if you have you'll have one between now and our next meeting about you know safe children or reciprocal borrowing or anything else that if the staff has any thoughts about how, uh, you know, we could do things better or we sh what we should do, um, that would be useful. So we want to get the best ideas from everyone and not let anybody feel like they're not part of it because we're all in this together. This is a good time to do it. Um, I know we're under stress, but the, yeah, it's at least we don't, I don't know. I think with the library closed down, maybe it's a good time to to look at all these things so it's it's good may i ask a question yes uh layla this question is for you would it make your life easier if i contacted uh, michelle in the children's department to ask about that it'll be easier for you to just talk with her take care of all that thank you very much though all right. okay great all right uh the next uh, area is the friends of the library report and the amazing Melanie Mannheim is going to all these meetings and she okay. is going to give us a, a report on that. Okay, here we go. So the Friends held their monthly meeting on Monday, November 2nd at 7, 7 p.m. via Zoom. Erica Petrosky, the library liaison to the Friends, explained that the staff is as busy as ever while the library building remains closed to the public. And we've also heard that from Layla as well. The amount of work seems to rival that of pre-COVID. The fall reading programs, take-home crafts, sidewalk stroll are definitely well received by the patrons. Upon receiving a museum renewal, the treasurer, the Friends, the Friends treasurer wondered whether or not to pay it, and Erica did assure the directors for the Friends that the museum passes are being circulated. With that confirmation, all museum renewal notices in the future will be paid. The Friends continue to edit and make recommendations to their current bylaws at each meeting. Due to the COVID-19, it has made it difficult to create a bylaw subcommittee and therefore the friends are working on it at each and every meeting. In order to ensure they address every item on the night's agenda appropriately, they've agreed to place a time limit, a constraint for discussion on the bylaws to move along in their agenda, which is a great idea. Earlier this year, the friends was, were notified that it was one of many recipients mentioned in the Bernard Vinick Trust. Although the friends have been working intermittently with an attorney's office and a local investment firm, all the legal requirements and transactions reached completion last week. However, at the Friends meeting, members discussed a variety of ideas as to how funds earned on the investments should be spent. First and foremost, the Friends will honor the wishes of Mr. and Mrs. Vinick, who requested that public donations be given to the bank of Western Massachusetts. Some suggestions were an increase to the Friends budget for the library staff's continuing education account, scholarships for students, guest speaker programs, funds for the library's gift account to help supplement the library's collection budget, and have book plates placed in memory of friends who have died during the previous year. 
No dollar amounts were discussed, just ideas. The friends have two vacancies on their board. Please feel free to let your friends and your family members know. They welcome new faces and fresh ideas. An introduction to the friends is a great place to gain knowledge about libraries and possibly become a trustee in the future. Currently, they have 260 members and their next meeting will be on Monday, December 7th at 7 p.m. And that's all I have for now. Great, thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions for Melanie? No. No, okay. Moving on then. Um, the next uh, area is other business. And uh, I believe Melanie attended uh, a, sem a seminar and would like to talk and share what she learned there uh, with all of us. Okay, just to let everyone know that on November 14th, the MLTA, the Massachusetts Library Trustees Association, they held their annual meeting and program with special guest speaker, Sally Reed. Um, did anyone have an opportunity to attend that evening? Okay, so uh, the subject was um, putting your stamp on the future, creating diverse and sustainable boards. So there's two factors um, that I'd like to um, uh, speak about right now. The first one was Sally Reed provided useful ideas on where boards can get the volunteers needed to fulfill those vacancies on their boards. People like to be personally asked. You should have an outreach plan. Mostly it's children's librarians who know what par which parents are engaged and ask them to perhaps be on the board and you can create the idea of new culture for your board. Many boards are adding teenagers to their boards to listen and to learn and to have that experience. The second factor was Sally Reed also addressed the importance of having an MOU, which is a memorandum of understanding between the friends, trustees, and library. As you all know, that is a document. She referred to a sample MOU on the United for Libraries website that she felt all parties involved would be receptive to. An MOU is an agreement with signatures. It's not a contract. An MOU is an understanding among all parties involved, the friends, the trustees, administration. This understanding is for the present time and for the future. And remember the MOU, like everything else, if the situation changes in the future, the MOU can easily be edited and modified. And the library director would definitely be included in the language development as well to meet the needs of our library. The MOU is non-controversial and is pretty standard and simple. It's just a simple clear cut document about the different roles of the friends, the trustees, the library. It, I also encourage this, you to, uh, the friends to add this document onto their friends website and it, again, it provides a place and a location for an MOU if it does get um, to that level. And that's all I have. So it was a good, it was a good uh, webinar. Okay, great. Thank you for uh, attending that and hang on to those notes because uh, I'm sure that people at the friends will learn a lot from that. Okay. So uh, let's see, um, does anybody else have anything else to add to the meeting today? No. No? All right, then our next meeting, our next virtual meeting is gonna be uh, Wednesday, December 18th. It's always the third Wednesday of every month uh, at 6 p.m. or a little bit after. Sometimes we have to talk about stuff or People come in late and uh, that's it. So I need, a, and I need a motion to adjourn today's meeting. I move that we adjourn today's meeting of November 18th. She's the best motioner, I'll tell you. Boy, and I'll I'll second that. <laughs> All right, so um, I guess we're adjourning our meeting and we, we will all, uh, I'll try to contact all of you soon Yep. Um, uh, good luck with your assignments and I'll see you all in a month for sure. Okay. We'll see you. Take care. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.